This has definitely been an overdue video with gear and guns constantly changing over time. I wanted to do a loadout video every six months, with one being for rec play and the other for speaky bee tournaments or scrims or what have you. Welcome to my channel, and if you're new here, my name is AJ, otherwise known as Anthony. I'm from the Bay Area and typically play a ton of airsoft along with a few tournaments here and there, some occasional paintball and skateboarding. But enough about that. Today's video will go over the gear that I run for the summer, since Cali weather can get a little too much sometimes, especially in the valley where all of these fields are at. Um, today I'll just go over the most frequent questions I get from comments on YouTube and on Instagram. With that being said, let's get right to it. BQB is definitely a growing playstyle that is so similar to speedball, and yet it is starting to make waves all across the world. And depending on how often you play, it could be about the same price as paintball or even a little bit cheaper. But overall, Speaky B has been a very fun playstyle um, outside of rec play when you're not doing any milsome or any speed soft stuff on the regular field. You can just get onto a normal field and just play competitively against other people. And with that, I do have two primary rifles I wanted to go over. You guys have seen this gun. I'm not gonna go too much into it. I have a video that I made about this particular gun, which I will put in the video description below. The SSG-1 from G&G &G has been the nicest gun straight out of the box. I have not upgraded anything internally except for the upper receiver. And you can tell that I am not using the stock upper because it is a little wonky for me. I am using the 556 from G&G &G as well. The only thing that's upgraded honestly is just the hop up bucking and inner barrel and then of course a few things here and there. Reading forums on Reddit or any other website you do get a little bit of wear and tear after about 10 to 15,000 shots. Eventually my tappet spring did break so it was easy replacement. The drop stock itself is very nice whether you're wearing a JT Pro Flex and a Die i5 or any other mask in between. It definitely gets you locked in on your sights whether you're in a CQB style play or even outdoor fields. This has been my primary straight out of the box tournament ready build. Nothing much to it. This is just a very fun gun. It's very short, kind of lets me get around those corners quickly enough. Definitely a good primary or even a good backup gun if you're playing any tournaments. For my next build, it is HPA based. Um, and you guys have seen me use this grip so many times before. I've had bad luck with grips, but this time around, I actually came and got the Euro Tactics ESG grip. It is so nice, it is very durable. You guys have kind of seen me with other grips before, um, but this time around, the durability of this one has actually been very nice. I will make an overview video sometime soon. I just want at least a month of playtime, just to be fair, and make a comparison video with all of the other grips that I've used before as well. The internal engine itself is a Polestar F2 with the rail being actual real steel, which I will provide a link in the description below. The tracer up front here is an Ace Tech Lighter BT, which doesn't just shoot green BBs, but also red ones as well. Also it comes with an app, so it lets you know when the battery's about to lump row. You can even chrono with this one, so it's kind of nice just to have. The SUU I do have installed is a Gorilla FCU, which also comes with an app. You can kind of make it so that you can shoot binary or change it from auto to semi-lock or whatever you need. It's a very good gun overall, and it roughly cost me about $1,500 to $1,700. So this is definitely a tournament gun that I love using. And as for a bit of a flex, I have the internal tracer unit in there. Now, I know it's from Max Hop Up, the internal tracer. I've heard some bad and good things here and there. So far, the internal tracer has been good to me if the actual tracer unit does die. It does light, them, light my BBs up fairly well, but I understand that this will kind of just wear out in time. It also is a battery killer, so just kind of keep a few little lipo batteries laying around you guys should be fine so this is my third rifle it is a backup gun um, it is also hpa vendetta speedsoft was nice enough to send me this newer prototype of his grip he is currently updating it right now so i will leave a description for his instagram and his website check him out when you guys get a chance it is very nice looking with a different style regulator which i've actually seen on a few paintball shops it's interesting that he's actually gotten these to screw into the 3d printed grip and it kind of comes out long enough so that way you're able to kind of fit the fcu and the lipo in there the rail itself is just a branded logo high kappa dogs that i've been having out for quite some time and i will release another drop soon so don't worry the internal engine itself is just a polar star jack now this is something that i will definitely bring on a tournament i'll have three different rifles all at once this is just a good one that i kind of use for rec play um, it does shoot really well considering that the majority of this upper is all stock and straight from the ssg1 i do want to run this for at least a month so i give it a fair review at some point and but it's been pretty pretty comfortable for 
me overall on the speed field when I tested it out the other day. It is a very light build because everything is polymer and considering that this is 3D printed, the only thing that's gonna be heavy is just the tank itself. And I do run a 50, 4500 Ninja tank. So I think we're good on that. All right, you guys have seen this before. I will put the video in the description below for this one. I have a more over depth review on that build in particular, but this nothing is on, honestly changed. This is just going to be brief. The upper receiver is from primary airsoft with the inner barrel being at a 5.1 length, which kind of makes it flush with the 4.3 outer barrel. The internals overall are mildly upgraded with the lower frame still needing some work. Some of the parts are still stock. The nine ball trigger, flat trigger itself is so nice. I have this on my gold match build as well. And that little curve at the end gives you just a little bit of grip. I have the TLR1 1S with a strobing feature. I don't like running backpacks with lines anymore. You guys have seen me kind of running just belts. I'm, I'll definitely start using this again probably soon if I go back to CQB City anytime. I do have a backup slide. The slide itself is a Black 4.3 limb cat in which I bought from Blowback Masters, my other sponsor. I'll, I'll eventually get back into high kappa, but because of the amount of tournaments that are coming into NorCal, I'll try to prepare for that instead. As for the gear, you can see right behind me, I have a few masks that I've kind of accumulated over the past year. The first being the Die I-5 that you guys have kind of seen me run. I've had this forever. It was just kind of hype for me when I first started playing Airsoft. No issues with this mask in particular. Honestly, it just kind of wears out after so much use. Actually, the only issue I have was just the bottom mouthpiece being too close to my mouth in particular. So if it was on a hot day and I'm breathing too heavy or anything, you get a lot of moisture that's kind of trapped right here, which will cause your lens to fog up a lot. Eventually, I started playing a little bit more paintball and I got the Empire uh, E-Flex. I think this is what it is. You can kind of tell I don't really use it too much, but it really, it's really nice. It's very simple. I think I got this for about 80 bucks. Easier to breathe because this part, this mouthpiece is a little bit more separated from the front part of your face. Under because of how much space there is between this and your mouth, you might get hit directly with on your neck, your jaw, your mouth. It's something I gotta be careful for. Really nice overall. The main mask you guys have seen me run is this JT Pro Flex. Honestly, this is just more of a flex, if anything, because of the color scheme. It's very limited edition. It's an X Factor one that came out about a few years ago. I got this on eBay. So I had to build this entire mask from the ground up. Both of these parts in particular costed about $300. The earpiece was just very cheap. You can get on anywhere, which was like 15 bucks. And the Sandana, the Sandana strap, which is about 30 bucks. So in total, I think this entire mask was about 350 bucks and normal JT Proflex mask will cost at about 80 to a little over a hundred dollars, I guess, just depending on what color scheme you get. Uh, the brand in the mask itself is kind of like the Supreme in the paintball world. So it's, like I said, it's a little bit of a flex, but I really like this mask. It's very easy with the lens itself. I can already see some of the scuffs that I've been getting hit from BBs. Um, but honestly, these lenses are very cheap. Overall, you can just buy for about 20 bucks. JT Pro Flex is kind of making waves in the speaky bee scene. You can kind of see more people wearing it, whether in Europe or in Australia, or even here in the States. I wanted to give a quick shout out to Kendo Sidekick because those guys are always looking good in their JT Pro Flexes. So I got another lower visor from my teammate Dice. Uh, depending on which color scheme I get for the top portion of the goggles, it may, might cost a little bit more. So this is definitely gonna be another mask you're gonna see me wear. This is just primarily for turn Tournaments so that way I could kind of stay in line with the color scheme that we currently have with our team, which is black and red. That way I don't look too funky with a black and turquoise. Honestly, that looks good with my jersey. So I ended up getting this jersey because it was fairly cheap, cost me about 70 bucks, which is really cheap for a hockey jersey. I do have our team jersey, which is DVS, has got I Anthony and my number on the back. I also have this Sandana jersey, which you guys have probably seen in some of my videos. It is very nice and loose fitting. It's got a good mesh. I use it for paintball some from time to time. Typically these jerseys will go about 80 to hundred dollars. A custom one from Anthrax could possibly go for a little more. So that's something to look into. With all the face masks that I wear on the field, of course, I'm always gonna have some headbands. Um, some of these are just for a flex, like the Sandana you see here, it was kind of a little overpriced uh, to the HK Army ones. Honestly, there's no difference in quality with one being hundred dollars more over the other one. Uh, they're all the same to me. So I honestly just wear a regular bandana that you can get at your local liquor store. I mean, they honestly kind of do help with sweat, so it's been pretty cool overall to use. 
Like this belt in particular is from Cubbysoft. I will put more information in the description. I did recently acquire an ambassadorship from them. You can kind of see that it holds not just four or six, it holds seven. These mag pouches you can actually take off and customize and put them on. Um, think of it like the Speaky Bee belts already. The whole system, you could just take off the mag pouches off of the Mole rig. Velcro system on here as well, so you can put on whatever you want on this particular belt. It emulates a paintball style belt really well, so I've had no issues with this coming off whatsoever. I've done the most hardest of slides on every field imaginable. Let's see, I got the Kakashi patch from Kaneda. Shout out to them, Bay Area based brand. Of course, I got the number 10 from Speaky B and a little bit of Rocco. I have the EPM1 uh, PTS mags um, and I got the Supreme bands here with everything in between. So right now during the summer, I do wear just shorts with some compression pants as well. The knee pads that I do wear are Nike knee pads. These do kind of wear out kind of fast. For shoes, I don't wear anything crazy in particular, but because we're from Cali and I always skateboard around every time, I use my Vans old schools. These are definitely beat up and you can kind of see where I've been doing all of the tray flips, hard flips, heel flips. These have been a really good running shoe out there. Everyone uses them, so why not? And whether I'm on turf, whether that's for paintball or even airsoft tournaments, I always have to have a pair of cleats and these are just regular Adidas football cleats that I got on eBay for about 50 bucks. You guys have seen this in a more recent video early this year. I keep everything in my HK Army bag. I got this smaller rifle case that was about $40 from AEX. I do have a small camera bag, which was about 15 bucks so you can find on Amazon. Kind of holds all of my memory cards and everything, my batteries that I need on the field. Some of you guys have asked me what I film with and I do have a GoPro Hero 8. The settings for that I do typically record at 2K at about 60 FPS. Anything higher than 60 FPS will typically kill your battery. Recently, I did acquire a run cam. This is the 1080 Airsoft Edition. I know there's a 4K version out, but seeing that as I'm not gonna use this really too much on the field, I have my Speaky Bee backpack. I barely use, I don't really like running backpacks and lines anymore. I do have the chest rig that does connect to it with the Cubby Soft M4 mag pouches. I do occasionally wear at least two sets of arm pads. Um, this is just mostly for sliding. You can see that it is it's definitely torn up from all the times that I've been sliding on the cement or even turf. Definitely use kind of like some tape around it occasionally just to kind of keep this apart. But other, other than that, it's the only one I've been using. You guys always ask what kind of BBs that I do use. I do have the ones that I purchased from AEX specifically inside an Ace Tech bottle. Kind of makes it easier, makes it a little bit easier to kind of carry around just so that way I don't have to drop any of them or anything like that. So as well as my Odin speed loader, this thing comes in handy all the time, whether I'm on or off the field, you guys definitely have to get one of these. I do run this tap backpack that I've had uh, from the very beginning. And lastly, for all of my HPA tanks, I do have a Ninja 504500, which has been pretty cool for me. Most of the time it will kind of go up to 3000 uh, 3, PSI. Thank you for watching this video. And of course, if you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me, whether it's on the DMs on Instagram or in the comments on YouTube. Um, and I will try my best to help you guys out where I can. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.